from Harris, Atlantic City, and being seen live on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network, Cedric Kushner Productions, and Corona Extra, in association with Harris, Atlantic City, are presenting Heavyweight Explosion, and is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, the Honorable Larry Hazard, Senior Commissioner. The judges, Tommy Kazmarek, Steve Weisfeld, and Rocky Castellani. Our referee is Tony Orlando. And our boxing fans, introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He weighed in at an even 296 pounds. This fella has five wins, two losses, one draw with two knockouts. From the Big Apple of New York City, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Lester, the real thing, Jackson. Jackson. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at an even 211 pounds. Now this young pugilist is undefeated in 13 pro bouts with 12 knockouts. All the way from Samoa, ladies and gentlemen, here is David, the Terminator Tua. Tua. Hey, gentlemen, I expect to see you to check yourself at all times. Anything here over here is okay. Is it good? Let's take a look at the numbers as these two fighters get ready as they're set for eight rounds this afternoon. You see the age different. Jackson, 10 years older, has a slight height advantage. Look at the weight, 296 to 211 as David Tua comes in. New Jersey rules, 10-point must. Standing eight count, three knockdown. Can't be saved by the bell. Referee and the doctor both can stop the fight here in New Jersey. Has run away, David Tua again in the blue, and we welcome our viewers on Sky from New Zealand this afternoon in watching our action from Atlantic City on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Sam Smith and Bob Spagnola, Tua, again trying to work himself inside on Lester Jackson. Jackson with a pretty good reach there, 76 to 70. He'll have a reach advantage, and that's what he'll try to do from the outside. Hey, Lester Jackson. Trying to get started here, get some respect right away from David Tua. He doesn't just want him coming to him with reckless abandon. David Tua's only got one fight, and that is coming forward the way that he does and fighting out of that crouch. And Lester trying to get some respect for him early here, but uh, this is a, a battle that David Tua has in every fight. He, he's used to being the shorter man in there fighting in that crouch, and he's just going to try to work past that jab and work on that body. He hasn't had much success thus far. But let's see how long Lester Jackson can keep up this uh, this work rate that he's showing here early in this fight. Jackson stuck in the corner. You can see him trying to bomb to try to keep two off the top of him. You know, Luke Duba has been around so many great fighters in his illustrious career. And every time he talks about David Tua, he seems to bubble. He really likes this kid. Out of uh, Western Samoa, now lives in New Zealand, fought for New Zealand in the Olympic Games, got a bronze medal out of it, and comes in here after a fourth round knockout in his last fight last month against Calvin Jones and undefeated at 13-0 with a dozen wins by knockout. By the way, does a lot of his damage early on. Six first-round knockouts, three in the second, and a two in the third round. So again, doing most of the damage there early on. Well, it looks could kill you. Lester Jackson has just annihilated David, too. He's really got a scowl in his face here. Yeah, Lester, you know, he's an older guy. He's been around the fight game for years. He's worked as a sparring partner uh, for, for years in the business. But, you know, he really feels like, hey, this is an opportunity to present itself. He'd been working in the gym. He was supposed to fight uh, Darnell Wilson on the undercard. And uh, because of uh, Samson Cohen pulling out of David two hours, he's got this opportunity. He really wants to try to make the most of it. So again, being very patient from the outside. Again, he wanted to try to work inside. But again, that... Six-inch reach advantage so far for Lester Jackson. The real thing is paid dividends. Also being a southpaw, Tua wanted to be careful and try to come into him cautiously here in the early rounds. Well, Lester's done a very good job here early, keeping the distance between the two of them. But, uh, you know, whether or not he'll be able to keep this work rate up for the entire fight will be the question at hand here. They had an argument about whether this would be 10 or 8 round fights and the Jackson camp uh, who had been prepared for a 6 succeeded in having it set for 8. And again being the late replacement and stepping up maybe it only was the fair thing to do as Jackson threw at the end of 1. 
Heavyweight explosion comes to you from Harris Hotel Casino, Atlantic City, as David Sue is back here in the blue against Lester Jackson. They're fighting in a scheduled eight rounder. Jackson again just elevated to the status of this pole feature just yesterday at the weigh-in. And David Tua preparing himself for whatever opponent. He really is kind of a laid-back type young man. He says, hey, I'll just prepare myself, and they got to beat me. I'm just going to go in and do what I'm supposed to do. Right, because he doesn't he doesn't vary regardless of who it is he's fighting. He sure doesn't have to, you know, box from the outside with many guys. David Tua, he's going to he's going to pressure guys and and you know he wants to get out Lester Jackson gave him a real good first round heck of a performance but you see Lester holding him you know around the shoulders and behind the heads and trying to walk him around the ring that's what he's going to have to do this is going to be a long eight round day for Lester here with David two out as big as Lester Jackson he can hug him all over the way he reaches around you with those big long arms and that body six one two ninety six two by the way if you're wondering where those twelve knockouts and thirteen professional wins he gets that honestly. 84 and 5 as an amateur with 72 wins by knockout. Not a lot of opponents stayed in there with him in his amateur days. A bronze medal, 1992 Olympic Games for New Zealand, where he fights out of right now. Does a little bit of training down in your neck of the woods, down in Houston, Texas. He still trained much down there. Yeah, well, no, he's been down there. Lou's had several camps in Houston, but I believe uh, more recently they've been down to Florida and maybe even in Norfolk where Pernell Whitaker was mm -hmm. fighting. But uh, he works very hard. They got no problem with him. And, they, you know, the one of the things that impressed uh, Shelley and uh, Lou about David two hour early was, you know, even he's got no style to be a three round fighter whatsoever. You know, and uh, but he still had a lot of success in the amateurs just uh, because of sheer punching power and getting guys out of there. So they, they were excited about his prospects in the professional rank. You see the big guy Jackson still with that long reach advantage able to loop over the top and throw some combinations to it trying to step underneath by the way Shelley that uh, Bob alluded to is Shelley Finkel who co-manages along with Lou Duva David Tua George Benton officially listed as the trainer for Tua but it's nice to have the legendary Lou Duva around the corner if you need some help Jackson continuing to do a good job but two hours you know continuing to do what he wants to do which is come on and Tony Orlando only at Almost had his hair part shifted there <laughs> from the breeze of that blow that David Tua missed Lester Jackson with. By the way, Jackson was part of that heavyweight winner take all. He lost in three to Bone Pressure Smith in Bay St. Louis. Last regular fight was March of last year. Won a four round decision over Tony Frazier. And again, his record coming in at 5 2 and 1, and Tua getting inside on Jackson. For the first time, David Tua reaches Lester Jackson with a right hand and another big right hand there to end the second round. Third round coming out with the heavyweights. Lester Jackson on the left in the solid black. David Tua in the blue with the white. And uh, Bob, you've split out the first two rounds with these two guys so far. Yeah, I mean, Lester Jackson did m almost all the scoring in the first round and uh, actually had a good initial part of the second round, but David Tua finished it strong with uh, some good solid shots, as I'm sure just where he wants to pick up there as he reaches Lester with the right hook. I mean, this Tua has, we've seen it before, he's got the kind of power that just locks guys' legs at the knees and sends them flying, so he... He, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing he's looking for. Wear a guy down, slow him down to where he can hit him with a clean shot. He's very heavy-handed. Jackson trying to, as Tua gets inside, time up as often as he can. Still working himself there. You see Jackson tying him up. Minute gone, round number three. Pretty good right hand thrown by Tua on his way in. I've got a feeling it Tua somewhere along the way as he goes a little head hunting here. Going to use maybe some angles to try to go to those sides of the body here, trying to hook some shots to the body before the day is over, if he can get in there. What we see happening is it's very common when the southpaw fights a right-hander, their front lead feet are getting tangled up here, and, and Tony Orlando got ta tangled up in that a little bit as Lester Johnson tried to back up there. And here's two out doing his business on the ropes. This is his office right here, Sam. This is what he wants to do. Body head, upstairs, downstairs. By the way, one of Jackson's leg probably outweighs Tony Orlando, the size this guy has at 296, and again, two up. 
Does punch enough time clock now here in the third with a minute to go. But Lester doesn't want to be in there against this kid. You know, he's, this is not the place to be. This is where David Tua wants all his opposition sitting up against those ropes so he can work, and there's no way for them to back up. And here he's landing some good, solid shots on Lexer Jackson as Lexer answers back, but not doesn't have any kind of a thunder on his punches. Jackson trying to throw back a couple of punches. There you see him trying to use that long reach advantage, literally trying to hold two out. Kristen Wainwright is the only man who has gone the distance six rounds here with David Tua. Outside of that, it's been all by knockouts. That fight was in November of 93 and was a six-round decision win by David Tua. Has an unblemished record at 13-0. And, and there you see why. Beautiful combination. The body shot started sending Jackson down. He scratched in the corner. Tony Orlando again with the discretion of a standing eight count. And the fact that the gloves nor the feet never left the canvas, he made the... And there's the bell to end the third round. Heavyweight explosion on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. From Atlantic City brings you round number four of a Schedule A rounder, Lester Jackson against David Tua. Tua with his back to you again has put Jackson down for the only knockdown so far in the fight. At near the end of the third. By the way, our Tony Orlando, the referee, Jackson had to take the count, even though the bell sounded it, and then been ruled as able to continue the fight. And then the, the round would officially end. The bell did not save him, nor did they automatically go to the corner. Again, he has to complete the eight count. And at the discretion of the referee, say that he is able to continue, and then the round is over. And that's exactly what happened there. Good job by Tony Orlando. <laughs> yes, Lester. He tried to pull Lester Jackson off of holding David Tuau, and he almost got thrown across the ring. He's in there with a lot of weight. But Tony knows how to work a big fighter. Yeah. He's doing an excellent job of it. He's not in there wrestling with these guys. He's trying to handle them with voice command. I wouldn't be surprised he's not saying Mr. Jackson as well. Two again, very unfazed by whatever's going on. He's just been very dedicated to, as Bob pointed out, that one speed, that one gear that he knows, and that's straight ahead. Does he have a reverse? I don't think he does. Yes, I don't know if we're going to get to see it today if he does. But Lester sitting here, you know, he should be in the middle of the ring. He can't fight this guy on the ropes. This is just where David Tua wants to be in short like this. And he's going to work those shots to the body and then work his way up to the head, which he was so successful with at the end of the last round. Tua, again, this cognizant that Jackson's trying to do the best to keep those rib cages covered up pretty good. And you can see him trying to go over the top a little bit. Taking an uppercut underneath. Yeah, left hook, left uppercut. Nice combination by David Tua. Jackson using his, his yep. right hand there kind of as a range finder to try to hold Tua off him, but he's just not doing anything off of that, and now he's getting pounded. And You can also see the conditioning is slowly but surely starting to take and sap the energy out of Lester Jackson. David Tua doing his best to get rid of the rest of that energy that Jackson has here near the end of round four. And Lester's just, you know, he's outgunned here. You know, he can't sit here and exchange punches with Tua because he, Lester's really not that kind of a puncher. He's more of a boxer, and he, he just can't sit there with his, uh, with his rump on the second rope and, uh, you know, expect to have a good day of it. He needs to be in the middle of the ring with this guy. They end the round number four. We're halfway through this eight rounder. Round five, scheduled for eight heavyweights. Lester Jackson against the ropes in the black, and David Tua right back to work. Interesting enough, you'd never know it, but David Tua started out as a guy who started fighting at the age of 11 in Auckland, New Zealand. Really got his nose bloodied by his sister and hid from his dad who wanted to put him in the ring and do some sparring. Didn't like it when he started, but apparently he likes it right now, and his dad... Certainly well rewarded with that bronze medal for his country, New Zealand, in 1992. Yeah, a lot of good fighters. I ran Barkley, took his first whippings <laughs> from his sister, so I don't think that's in. A lot of us got whipped by our older sisters. 
I just seem to get locked out of my house a lot by mine. I never could figure that out. Tua again pushing and shoving with Jackson where he has lived on the ropes here particularly in the last three rounds. The best laid plans you know Lester Jackson came out here with a game plan and really uh, or did well in the first round with it you know boxing and uh, keeping that right jab out there from David Tua but since then really it's uh, you know he just didn't have the gas to, to fight that kind of a fight and he started leaning on these ropes and David Tua has just been all over him. Jackson, by the way, does have a couple of knockouts in his five wins, but both of them came early, one in the first and one in the third. So he is really threading on a little tough ground right now. As a matter of fact, he's only been six rounds once, and he lost that to Stan Butler. That came back in 1984 in February. Only time he's been past the fourth round. And Lester really now, he's been reduced to holding and, and uh, you know, trying some stuff for different ploys just to you know to uh, keep Tua off him and he, he's not been very successful at all and Tua's really getting into his groove here and and hammering Lester. You know I mentioned that Wainwright was the only one to have gone the full distance with uh, Tua just starting to work himself up the ladder was going to have a 10 rounder today never been past six and was hoping maybe to get a little uh, 10 round action today but that was not the case as Jackson a late substitute at the weigh in again they cut it to eight rounds. got to execute that game plan though you know you can't just uh, you know Lester's trying to fight off there a little bit and trying to give uh, you know but he's if he when he's there's some range for him to punch it two has got range to really punch him and Lester's just in a bad position there leaning on the ropes there he can't go left and he can't go right and he can't go straight back so he's really just trapped himself in a, and here two was unloading with some heavy thunder on him Tony Orlando had warned Jackson for holding on to the rope with that off left hand Literally holding on, trying to get a little leverage, maybe to throw an inside right hook. Right now, Tua, he's picked a few spots, but not many as we end the fifth round. Sixth round, schedule eight rounder, Lester Jackson. Probably the closest he'll find the center of the ring as he came out about a third of the way and now retreats back into his normal haunt, back over in that corner again. And Tua, let's see if he does anything differently. And this the sixth round to try to get him out of there. Maybe do some more damage on him here. Oh, big right hand will do it. Yeah, David Tua is right now at the stage of his career. They're teaching him how to, you know, to change the speed of his punches. You know, sometimes he just pushes the right in, in there a couple of times. Sometimes he slaps a little with the left hook two or three times. Then he really turns it over and puts that heavy thunder on it. And that, that way his opponents can't prepare themselves for those heavy punches. Good straight right hand. He's just working in there, a little slapping a little bit, and then he'll really dig his toes into the canvas and really rip some heavy shots. Two out continues to work Lester Jackson over in the corner there. Jackson, you know, really at this point just might be looking to try to survive out of that corner as opposed to trying to win, although he kind of opens up out of there with a couple of good punches. But when he does that, Sam, all he does is leaves himself open to some good, solid counter shots by two out. Just leaning on Jackson halfway through the sixth round. And again, holding onto the ropes. And now, here's Orlando. That's the second time that he has warned Lester Jackson for holding onto the ropes. Duva imploring his, uh, his fighter in there to really settle down and that Let's go with a nice right hand. He pulls the string on it. And another. Lester Jackson fights off well off the ropes here for the second time in this round, but it's just not enough to, to uh, you know, keep David Tua off him. David Tua is right back to doing what he's doing. When he loops a right hand and stretches Lester's head backwards. Uh, eight or nine seconds this fight has all been in this corner in this round 
They've got long for Lester Jackson to mobile down about 22 feet from his corner right into the opposite neutral corner. Down to the left of where he was seated. And we end round six in the same place and then round five. In the corner with Tua doing damage. Again on the ropes. See pawing with that right hand. That good right straight right again by Tua. Another good right hand by David Tua turns Lester Jackson in there. But in between that, Lester did some nice things with his own right jab and a couple of straight left hands. David Tua up rather anxious to get started here for the seventh round. Cedric Christer's heavyweight explosion brought to you by Corona Extra and Harris here in Atlantic City opens up the seventh round as David Tua opens up against Lester Jackson. Sam Smith along with Bob Spagnola greeting you from Atlantic City as the summer months are just around the corner and things are starting to heat up here on the Jersey Coast. And right now the fans are hoping something heats up here and at least we've got a different venue. We're in a different corner. They'll be right above us for probably the remainder of this part of this round as Jackson has come completely across the uh, ring and in the opposite neutral corner. Now Lester now started us. Hey, he started this round very well, but he's reverted back to up against the ropes and on the corner, and there Dave Tua lips, rips a nice left hook to the body. <laughs> Lester just pushing his punches out there for uh, all intents and purposes. He doesn't have that good mustard on many of them. So again, throwing some combinations. Tony Orlando again watching closely as... Jackson still trying to grasp that ropes with his left hand. Got a little flipping right jab thrown by Jackson again. At least trying to keep to an honest and off of him for a moment. But he hasn't been able to turn that straight left hand over after it on David Tuau. Lester trying to play a few mind games with David Two out here, but uh, Lester almost had Tony Orlando come in there. He'd warn him if he did that again, grab that rope. Jackson off yeah. the ropes pretty good. A little shot of adrenaline there, trying to come off the ropes. having his best round since the first round. You hear the crowd trying to get everybody into this fight. Jackson fans, along with David Tua's supporters here. And Jackson has more than does Tua today. Jackson's really having a good round here. He's backing David Tua up, and that's a promise of something you're not going to see happen to David Tua to happen. But now, Lester, that's probably it for him for the round. You know, that's probably might be all the energy he had for this fight, and, and he's back there resting, and now David Tua is going to come on. By the way, we might be able to sell that last photo a moment ago to Sports Illustrated around the world. We saw Lester Jackson in the center of the ring. We haven't seen him here most of the day against David Tua. As they finish out the seventh and will head for the eighth and final round of this fight. Now they'll touch up in the center of the ring. How long will it stay in the center? Let's see. Lester Jackson takes one last good gulp of air, heads to the ropes, and two is right after it. I think Lester may have shot his bow there. He had a real good seventh round, but at about 25 seconds to go in the round, I think he was about done. So let's see if he can do anything to keep David Tua off him here in this round. Tua had come in after that, again, decision win over Wainwright with three knockouts. More than likely will not get one today unless some lightning happens here. Well, he's got some lightning and some thunder, too, but uh, Lester Jackson, you know, when he stays off those ropes, he's starting the, the eighth round here. Well, just little pity pat shots, but uh, they get David Tua off of his rhythm here. Think about Jackson, too, when he turns with those big shoulders. He can knock you all over the place. There goes Tua right back in on top of him again. Jackson has had that same stare throughout the entire fight. As you see a minute gone in round number eight. 
Lester had a game plan and he wanted to do certain things. He wasn't really successful in doing them, but when he did do them, which, you know, to keep that good right jab out there, and there again he rests that arm on the on the top rope, and Tony Orlando makes that move on him, and pulls it right off. Jackson's corner imploring him to get those hands busy, and they feel like he could win this fight, but uh, you know, the, the mind might be willing, but the flesh is weak, man. Well, rounds number six and seven actually pretty fair and even maybe even six throughout. Jackson might have been close to another one in the seventh, so this fight could be a little closer than a lot of our anticipating. Even though, keep in mind, back in the third, there was a knockdown. Jackson went down in the third, and then when he's crouched in his quarter, it could be a telltale point as well. There's no doubt that two is ahead on the cards, but Jackson's trying to make a little bit of fight out of him. Yeah, he is, and, uh, you know, he's he's exposed David to a little bit here, but here you see David getting back into what he wants to do, settling down there and ripping those body shots and then coming up to the head. That's what Lou Duva and Georgie Bent want him to do, take advantage of his natural attributes, and, you know, he's let Lester Jackson, uh, Lester's, you know, trying a few things with him, mess with his head a little bit here and got him out of his rhythm, but he's back into it and settling in here, finishing real strong in this fight. It'll be very interesting to hear the comments of Lou Duva, George Benton, and that of David Tua. As Don Spagnuolo will go into the rings as we close down to the final 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds of this fight this afternoon from Atlantic City. David Tua against Lester Jackson. And Jackson's done exactly what he wanted to do. He stepped into the ring with undefeated David Tua. And Tua, for that part, has also punched the scorecard and done a good job as well as again Jackson spitting that mouthpiece out after his eight rounds and still jawing away with those working in his corner with him. It goes down as far as a fight. But nonetheless will be certainly a fight that will be once again unofficially in our cards in favor of David Tua. How close it'll be. We've got it uh, unofficially on my card. I've got it a three point fight for Tua. I believe Bob has it a uh, four-point fight. So we're probably just about in the same ball game there with David Tua again, our winner on our unofficial cards. But again, with that, at about a dollar anywhere here in Atlantic City, you can get you a good cup of coffee, I'm sure. The judges score it at ringside, a 10-point must scoring system. And they are the people that now have the decision in their hands. David Tua, again, being brought on very, very nicely by Lou Duba, along with Shelly Finkel and trainer George Benton. Seemed very calm, very businesslike today. Never got ruffled, even though he was hit a couple of times by Lester Jackson. Backed up very frequently in this fight. Kept Jackson trapped on the ropes. Didn't get frustrated when he couldn't get all the punches in he wanted to. Jackson came on strong in the latter three rounds, six, seven, and eight in particular. Threw some punches, letting Tua know that he was not going to lay there and just give up. And this Hara Casino Hotel crowd at the Broadway by the Bay Theater in Atlantic City. Looked on to see if Dea Tua again would finish it off and get the victory, his 14th. And his only his second time that he will have gone to a decision on the cards. Sometimes some of the most anxious moments, maybe not so much here, and the fact that they feel that he's got the decision, but other times that's a long wait for those cards to be collected as Ed Darian is collecting the final decision here and will make that decision known to us as he steps to center ring. David Tua looking again for his 14th win. Let's go upstairs and find out what the decision is with our ring announcer. It is Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, from Harrah's here in Atlantic City, we've got the scoring, and here it is. Judges Stephen Weisfeld and Tommy Kazmarek each scored 78-74, while Judge Rocky Castellani, he watched it at 79-73. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, David, the Terminator, Tua. Tua. David, Tua getting a unanimous decision as we pointed out to Bob Spagnola had it 78-74. You heard a couple of judges had it right on. 79-73 on the other card. And again, uh, we had it on my unofficial card as a three-point win by Tua. All of them stepped up into the ring. He has Lou Duba along with David Tua. As let's go upstairs now, here is Bob Spagnola. Bob? I'm here with Lou Duba and David Tua, his undefeated prospect, uh, Southpaw, last minute change. Did that give you any problems here today, Dave? Well, you know, uh, really, first of all, Samoa and Momoa, and of course, time, we had a lot of fun, and 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 we had a lot of fun
Finally, it's a long time to say love and mole, not tapu, eh? Well, uh, first of all, you know, I'd like to say uh, thank the good Lord, you know, for watching over the fight, you know. Uh, it didn't uh, change my plan, you know. Uh, just one of those things I had to pick myself up again and just, and uh, pick up the pace. And, uh, you know, I thank my team for getting me in good shape. Yeah, you were in excellent condition, and that uh, Jackson tried to move from you, but once he got onto the ropes, that was more your office, and you took advantage of it. How'd you feel about the fight, Lou? I thought it was a tough fight, you know. Uh, it was a last-minute switch on the opponent. He was fighting the right-hander, uh, that box, and he we got, wind up with a 300-pounder in it as a southpaw and a cute guy, you know. But I thought David did, uh, did well out there. He just couldn't get himself set uh, today where he really could have got his punches off. So he just had to wear this guy down, you know. And uh, we just wanted to just fight in the, in the learning experience. Sure, it was a good experience, and it goes down in the right column. Congratulations, fellas. Thank we'll you. see you again soon.